We just completed our lab on rust. It was pretty exciting. But we know rust is a chemical process. So when we look at the rock record of the earth, we understand that things changed on the earth to allow this chemical process. Let's take a closer look at chemistry. Reaction rates, how fast reactions happen, can be affected by three things, concentration, temperature, and a catalyst. The main idea here is that reactive molecules must make physical contact with each other in order to transform into products. It's all about making physical contact to get a reaction. If the reactants are in a low concentration, there's less of them, so there's less likely a collision between them. If they're more concentrated, I've got more of these reactants, so they're going to make contact. Think of it this way. As you walk across the quad on a real, real slow day, you're less likely to make contact with other students. But as you walk across the quad on a really busy day, let's say during lunch, you are much more likely to make contact with a student. It's pretty obvious. If the reactants are moving fast when they hit each other, they're more likely to break bonds and then form new bonds. If they're moving too slowly, then they're more than likely just going to bounce off each other. When we look at a reaction, we have to keep in mind that there's a certain amount of energy that's needed for a reaction to progress. We can look at this amount of energy needed as the activation energy. So think of it as these reactants having to climb a hill in order to become the new product. Here's an example of ozone having to become oxygen. Here's the activation energy needed. We can use a catalyst to reduce the energy needed for these products to form. The activation energy here is shown being reduced by chlorine, the catalyst. It is not part of the new product. It just helps reduce the energy. So the last couple days, we got a chance to revisit the idea that there are different kinds of chemical reactions. Here's one with sodium bicarbonate and acetic acid. Wow! Wow, Mr. Dixon, this science experiment, it's cold. So this sophomore apparently has forgotten that there's no such thing as cold. Maybe he went to uni high school last year or something, I don't know. But we have exothermic reactions and endothermic reactions. In exothermic reactions, reactants form products and energy is released. In endothermic reactions, Energy goes in to the system as reactants become products. As we look at a model of a molecule, we have the colored spheres here and the wooden sticks between them. The spheres are the atoms and the wooden sticks are the bonds. As it turns out, the energy is in the bonds. Energy is involved when we either make or break these bonds. This table shows you the bond energies for different bonds. Here we have hydrogen hydrogen and we have 436 kilojoules per mole. Yeah, you thought moles were going away. Bonds between different atoms will have different amounts of bond energy. Think of it as two magnets. It's going to take energy to break these two magnets apart. It's, it's, it's a struggle for me to break these magnets. Okay, stop laughing. That ain't right. This is hard. And it's not like I'm a weakling or anything. Okay, I'm a little weak and old. But it's still difficult to do. It takes energy. You come in my room and try it. So in pulling the magnets apart, it's as if we're ripping apart two atoms. Energy is absorbed. So 
So a negative bond energy means we're going to form the bond and energy is released. Back to our magnets. Notice when these magnets slam together, when they form a bond, energy is released. We'll hear that energy as sound. Listen. Whether I break a bond or form a bond, the same amount of energy is involved. A hot pan is going to radiate heat. It's going to go from where it is concentrated to where it is dilute. The gasoline for this truck combusts into smaller molecules. Marbles bouncing on the floor are going to come to a stop. It's the natural tendency of energy to disperse. So we can now describe chemical reactions in terms of entropy, a high entropy or a low entropy. If it's a high entropy, that means the energy is becoming more spread out. A low entropy means the energy is becoming more concentrated. Reactions that result in an increase in entropy, energy dispersal, tend to occur on their own. Which type of reaction leads to a greater dispersal of energy, endothermic or exothermic. That's right, exothermic. Good job. Here's a challenge for you. Does photosynthesis lead to an increase or a decrease in entropy? We'll answer that when we come back to class. <laughs>